good afternoon. Welcome to Grace Episcopal Church, and especially those who might be with us online as well. I'm Reverend Charles Ulick. We begin our service today on page 355 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 355. Today we are commemorating Lawrence, the deacon, and he was martyred for the faith of our church and for our Lord Jesus Christ. I'll say a little bit more about him in just a few moments. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Page 356. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Our colic prayer can be found on the insert at the top for today's commemoration of Lawrence. Let us pray. Almighty God, by whose grace and power your servant Lawrence triumphed over suffering and despised death, grant we that we pray that we, steadfast in service to the poor and outcast, may share with him in the joys of your everlasting kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear God's sacred word. Our reading today is from the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verses 19 through 27. Then Nebuchadnezzar was so filled with rage against Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that his face was distorted. He ordered the furnace to be heated up seven times more than was customary, and ordered some of the strongest guards in his army to bind Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to throw them into the furnace blazing fire. So the men were bound, still wearing their tunics, their trousers, their hats, and their garments, and they were thrown into the furnace of blazing fire. Because the king's command was urgent and the furnace was so overheated, a, the raging flames killed the men who lifted Sadrach, Meshach, and Abdigo. But the three men, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abdigo, fell down, bound into the furnace of blazing fire. Then the king, then King Nebuchadnezzar, was astonished and rose up quickly. He said to his counselors, was it not three men that we threw bound into the fire? They answered the king, true, O king. He replied, but I see four men unbound walking in the middle of the flame and they are not hurt. And the fourth was in the appearance of God. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the door of the furnace of blazing fire and said, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abdigo, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Sadrach, Meshach, and Abdigo came out from the fire and the straps, pre the prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered to together and saw that the fire had not had any power over their bodies of those men. The hair of their heads was not singed. Their tunics were not harmed, and not even the smell of fire came from them. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Our psalm today is Psalm 126. 
please read by half verse, breaking at the asterisks. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then, then was our mouth filled with laughter. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for us. Restore our fortunes, O Lord. Those who sowed with tears, those who go out weeping, carrying the seed. Please stand for the gospel. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. This is from John chapter 12, verses 24 through 26. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who, lose, who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Christ. May what I am about to say be in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, these readings are very appropriate for today as we listen uh, to uh, the readings from Daniel and from John's Gospel and even Psalm 126. They are dedicated because as we commemorate Lawrence, the deacon and martyr of the third century, he was martyred for the faith, uh, unfortunately, by the Roman emperor, uh, Valerian, at the time, Valerian, uh, at the time of 257 A.D. And uh, during that time, in the persecution that he did, uh, prior, just a year after, he had executed all and many of the Christians because he found them a threat, and the teachings of Jesus Christ were going against those of the teachings of Rome. Sixtus II was the bishop of Rome at that period of time, and Lawrence was one of his deacons and many others who were six other followers. Sixtus was executed by Valerian and his, uh, his governor and gave all the purse of the Christian faith to Lawrence to take care of those in need and of the poor. He did that, and it was entrusted to him. He took this... And when he was asked to give those monies and where those monies were by the Roman prefect, he denounced them. He gave them to orphanages, to the poor, the widows, those who were in the streets, the aged, and those who were uh, uh, orphans. Poor Lawrence, unfortunately, three days after Sixtus, his bishop, was executed, he himself was put to the fire, unfortunately, with a terrible martyrdom. If you, if you hear about Lawrence, you hear of how he gladly was willing to be tortured on behalf of Jesus Christ. As we listen to our readings from Daniel and from John's gospel today, we are told and reminded of how sometimes we will be asked much of our lives and if we trust in God, faith that is, faith that we may not be able to see or to touch, but it is faith alone, to have faith in something other than ourselves that moves us from difficult times, especially even in times when we are asked to give of our, even our own lives, to sacrifice, maybe for our loved ones or for those who are less fortunate than ourselves. The monies and wealth that we are given at many times 
are sometimes given because we think we worked hard for them. We forget about how gifted we are to be able to receive a wage and how that our employer is just that. They see our talent, our skills, and they wish to give us a, an offering that is worthy of our work. The simplest things can be chosen for us today. And Lawrence reminds us that the, the gratuity that we receive in this life is nothing that of which is of the kingdom of God, which is glorious and unabiding without pain or suffering. We are promised this as Christians, and we hope this day is a reminder, just as Lawrence is an example for us, that being faithful to God helps us and sees us through terrible and difficult times. Even in the third century long ago, we still today are living the ideas of how to follow Jesus better. Amen. At this time, if you'd please stand, if you are able, and let us offer our prayers as people of God. Prayers of the People, page 387 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 387. Prayers of the People, form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you name be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. If you'd like to offer a prayer or two. Indeed. Pray for Whitney Bechtel and her father, Pat, who's on hospice. We pray for Anthony Hunter as he recovers from surgery. Pray for the uh, many people in eastern Kentucky who are suffering because of flooding. We pray for those who have lost their lives or lost loved ones. We pray for all those celebrating birthdays or wedding anniversaries today, especially those celebrating birthdays, Sue Finsky, Gina Diesel, Caroline Menendez, and April Cochran. We pray for those with love in their hearts and as couples, for Emily Fowler Black, for Heather and Michael Brown, for Molly and Julian Desmukes, and for Juliet and Paul Grumley. We give thanks, Lord. We praise your name for all those who are expecting babies, for those women, and that they may have uh, healthy pregnancies. We pray for all travelers and those uh, who are traveling. We pray for all students and teachers as they start school this week. Be with them. We pray for all those inscriptions in our book of prayerful intentions off to the side of our, our church wall here. And for all those people who are dear to us, we lift up. Lord, hear the prayers of thy people and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of thy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Turning back to page 360 in your book of common prayer, page 360, page, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you 
in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved ourselves as our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life, amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. God's peace be with you all. Thank you. Please be seated. I have a couple of announcements. Uh, we are extending the back-to-school supplies to the end of August. If you are interested in helping uh, needy children in schools, in our local elementary schools, you're welcome to drop those supplies off here at the church um, as you come into the office doors. The uh, Acolyte Ribbon Sunday, when we... Uh, uh, pre give uh, appreciation to all of our acolytes and their families uh, will be happening at 10 o'clock on August 21st. And uh, Verger's Breakfast will be coming back that same morning at uh, 8.30, 9 o'clock. All those are welcome to come and have breakfast here on August 21st for uh, Verger's Breakfast. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a sacrifice unto God. We continue our service on page 367 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 367. Please stand with me as we continue our service. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the obedience of your saints, you have given us an example of righteousness and in your, their eternal joy, a glorious pledge of hope of our calling. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed it is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. 
in the calling of Israel to be your people, and in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, O gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Lawrence and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for you, the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. As we come forward for Holy Communion, all are welcome. As we are still in high transmission rate, I uh, invite you to please entinct into the chalice uh, for today. All are welcome. I'll first distribute the bread and then the chalice. Jesus said, Abide in me, as I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, 
Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. John chapter 15, verses 4 through 5, verses 8 through 9. Let us offer our prayer after Holy Communion, found on page 366, page 366. Please stand. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of, the, of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, and of our Lord and Savior. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth and be the church. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Have a wonderful week. Thank you for coming.